as something grows into the world, it is never linear. So I remember always thinking that each year I would just double or grow my business, double, double, double. And I thought that'd be simple. What happens? For a lot of us starting out businesses, we think it's linear. We think that input in, input out, input in, input out. But I tell you what, your business is gonna get nowhere at the beginning. And this was the breakthrough I got. I will continue with sharing the exponential thinking models that really blew my business up and helped me understand what it really takes to become that exponential entrepreneur that creates big businesses. These were shared to with me directly from a billionaire. So let's get right into them. I hope you've enjoyed all the other six. We're going to go through seven, eight, and nine today, which is fantastic and it's so fun. So look, the first one is to understand how things grow. Most people don't get this, is that as something grows into the world, it is never linear. So this understanding of the universe of how something grows and the Fibonacci growth pattern shows us this. So I remember always thinking that each year I would just double or grow my business, double, double, double. And I thought that would be, that'd be simple. And what I found out and what many of you will find out is as you grow your money and as you grow your business is that it's never like that. And Fibonacci, very, very famous growth pattern, shows how something comes into the world. Now, you see this same pattern with flower petals. You see it in seed heads. You see it in our body, like our ear and the size of our fingers. And it's really fascinating. So tree branches have this same growth pattern and shells. Our bodies have this, as I said, and you see it everywhere. And the way that it works is that it multiplies or adds the number before to it. So the first period of time, you get one. And so then, so it started from zero to one. And then the next, it gets it gets another one. So now it only grew exactly the same. So you've gone in three, whatever, let's say they're months. You've gone zero, one, and then you've gone one again. And then you add the one before, and so now it becomes two. So in that, let's say it's two years or three years or three months, whatever that time period is, all you've been able to do is go zero, one, and then you get one again. And then now you're at two. Now the next one's at three. So the, the incremental is so small because now two plus one is three, right? And then what happens is it starts to shift because it's three plus two is five. And then five plus three is eight. And then eight plus five is 13. And then 13 plus eight is 21. And so now if you look at that one there, we went from 13 to 21 in the same time period. So you see that the growth starts to get so big, right? And then the next one goes here, 21 and 13, it goes to 34. And so now all of a sudden that one just went up to 34. Then the next one's 55 and the next one's 89 or something. So it starts to go massive like this. What happens? For a lot of us starting out businesses, we think it's linear. We think that input in, input out, input in, input out. But I tell you what, your business is going to get nowhere at the beginning. In fact, for a lot of us, it feels like we've started below zero because we have to actually invest money and we start. Now, what happens is, a lot of people never get through the zero, one, one, two, three. They go broke. They never get through that because that what they do is they try to start two or three businesses at once. And this was the breakthrough I got. When I understood how Fibonacci grows into the world, and you got to understand how this pattern works is that everything you do before gets added to what you're about to do. So it, it builds on what you've already done. It's fascinating to look at how this is everywhere. It's a universal code of how things grow. And so when you know this code, you realize that if you try to start two businesses at once, all you're going to do is have split focus. And that period of flatlining will be doubled, right? The zero to one now takes twice as long. And so you just have a humongous long time. This is the number one killer of new business owners. They try to start not just one business. Sometimes they try to start two. Many people I know, they've got one, two, three, four, five, six businesses, seven businesses all at once. And all of them are not at that exponential growth curve. And the, the reason why they do it is they see someone maybe like myself or even has a bigger business, they go, well, look, they've got all these businesses. But if you actually study how people grew their millions, they focused, they stayed in one focus and they got one to that point, that inflection point where it really grows. So this thinking model is to understand that the way something that uh, something comes into the world is not actually linear. A and to even think that it would be linear is crazy is it's actually going to get nowhere for a very long time and then start to get somewhere. 
you know, in, in a couple of my businesses, right, in the personal development or, or conscious development space or mindset space, I first started that in 2011. Right? And I remember being in that phase for years. And then finally you break through, right? And then it starts to go. And that's where all the fun is. Same with my marketing business. So you, you got to understand that all the success is going to come down the path. Business owners have to keep on investing time and resources and money and without seeing much growth for a long time. And then it's going to take off. So the next uh, concept that I was explained was the hedgehog concept, and it really relates to what we're just talking about. The hedgehog concept is is this uh, from this famous essay, where called the Hedgehog and the Fox, where basically the the author divided the world into hedgehogs and foxes, and he says the fox knows many different things, but the hedgehog only knows one. So the the story goes the the fox keeps coming up with these cunning ideas to try to get the hedgehog, and all the hedgehog does, or porcupine if you like, is is curls up in a ball. And, and and that's it. And has those spikes just spiking out. That's all it has. It just curls up in a ball. That's all it does. Is it? That's just one thing it does. It's that's what it's the best at. The fox is trying all these different things. It's, it's a cunning fox. Tries to create traps and all these things, but just does one thing. So it reminds me of the Wiley e. Coyote cartoon where you know, this this coyote's trying all these things to try to finally catch a roadrunner, but but just runs away every time. So it's really funny. And so to me, this understanding was massive. So the hedgehog concept is a Venn diagram of three circles. The first circle is what can you be the best in the world at? And this is so important. What can you be the best in the world at? And you draw a circle and you write down what could you with your skills see I wish that I could be best in the world at basketball. Truly, that was my dream. But it wasn't in my stars. It wasn't in my divine purpose in this experience. And so I wrote out, what can I be the best in the world at? And when I started to clarify as a teacher and a business leader and an educator and a marketer, I started to realize there's some place I can be the best in the world at. And then what am I really passionate about? So what am I passionate about? And you draw a circle and you write down everything you're passionate about. And then the last thing is what drives your economic engine? And I think this is very, very important. If you can be the best in the world at something, that's great. And if you're passionate about it, but let's say it doesn't make any money. It's not it's not valuable in this sense, right? And so the hedgehog theory is helping you find this one thing that you can just focus on and get so clear on where you can be the best in the world. And so I can't be the best in the world at many things, right? But what I can be the best in the world at is is very, very, very clear, which is to be a super conscious educator for entrepreneurs. I am the best in the world at that. For sure, there's no one even close to me about that. But it took me years of refinement to find this hedgehog theory. And so you, what you want to do is you either want to find your place where you find, you use the hedgehog theory to find this place or invest in people who have this, right? This is crucial, is if you're looking to invest, you want to make sure, and I've got another principle for you coming up later that will help uh, called the star principle, about how you can really make sure that you invest with the right people that are going to grow. So uh, that's the second one. So today we've done Fibonacci growth pattern and a hedgehog theory. The third for today, so this is the this is our ninth thinking model. And I hope you're enjoying these thinking models, the way to think about the world, right? We've, we've actually covered a lot. We, we really have covered a lot so far, right? It's better to go 10x and 2x. A business is a profitable engine. Emotional clarity creates buyers, 4% rule. Flywheel reinforcing systems. We've covered quite a bit of things, but this one here is probably my most important one, which is the creative structure. So in life, we live in two different structures, right? We have the creative structure, and the creative structure is where we are focused fully on what we want to create. And we focus on what we would like, where we are now, and the action we need to take to get there. Crucial. That is a creative structure. Most people are not in the creative structure, right? It's why I'm wearing this t-shirt. Are you oriented today? They are oriented in a different way. They are oriented towards a problem. And what happens is most people are looking at, at the current circumstances that they have and trying to fix them. And then what happens is all they do when they focus there is they're just trying to resolve uh, something that's negative. And so they look, they say, I'm not good enough, or I don't have enough money, or I don't feel worthy, or I don't feel successful enough. So I'm going to do something to escape this. What happens is all the power is in the negative. It's all in what they don't want. So as soon as they get some escape velocity, as soon as they start moving, well, that problem's no longer there. So there's no more momentum. And so what happens is they get caught in it. In fact, they get trapped by what they don't want. They can never actually be free of it because they're not being creative. Being creative, it doesn't matter where you start from. That's just the start of the journey. The creative structure and the problem structure are actually made up of three points each. 
And, and each of the three points has one thing in common, which is the current reality. So the creative structure has a current reality, a desired result, and an action. The problem structure has a current reality, a, a wound, an unconscious wound, and then an action to resolve that wound. And so, for example, many people don't actually live in a creative structure and go for what they want. A an example is, is somebody who struggles to go and create the body that they love. The only time they get in momentum is when they put on their jeans or put on a shirt or something and they go, wow, I, d I don't look at the way I want to look. And so they get this, this un I'm unworthy or I'm not good enough or I'm not perfect looking this way. That triggers an emotion in them. Well, I'm not perfect. I'm going to get judged, which then puts them into action. That gets them into a little bit of momentum, only enough so they feel just good enough. And then that stops the action. See, it was based on a win. There's nothing wrong with whatever body shape you have. It's their structure, right? Versus someone else goes, you know what? I just choose to have a body shape this way. That's what I would love. And I'm quite happy with how my body shape is now, right? They come in and that's the key is you must neutralize any of the unconscious wound about how it is now. That's the key. When you live in a creative structure, which is one of the most important things that I teach, is when you live in a creative structure, you can pull in big results because here's why. No one needs to be a self-made billionaire. No one needs to make billions. No one needs 20, 30, 40 million dollars a month coming in. No one needs that. That's not needed. That's a want. And so as a creator, you shift to being wanting. Oh, I just would like that. That seems fun. I want to move the consciousness forward. I want to do something for humanity. It's a want, not a need. And so many people live in this needing, I must change this, this is bad, and, and they create pictures in their mind of how others will respond to them if they've changed. Those are the three for today and uh, for this session. I hope you really enjoyed them. Obviously, we've got a lot more information in our courses about the creative structure, Hedgehog and Fibonacci. These are very, very important ones. On the next episode, I'm going to be diving into these next three. They're going to blow you away. So if you're enjoying these thinking models, make sure you go grab the very next episode. Bye for now.